Are we alone in the universe? That is perhaps one of the biggest questions that humankind has ever asked. It might sound a little bit sci-fi, but there are legitimate scientific research studies that are doing extensive searches of the night sky for signs of life out there in the universe. And this month, the latest results from one of those projects, Breakthrough Listen, was published by Chosa and collaborators, reporting on their hunt for life outside of our own galaxy, the Milky Way, and instead looking for extra galactic life. Life that exists in other galaxies of stars in the universe. Now, there's two main ways that you can go about looking for signs of life. You can either look for what are known as bio signatures or biomarkers, or you can look for what's known as techno signatures. Now, bio signatures or biomarkers are like the natural signs that life is present somewhere on a planet. So for example, like an element or a molecule that can only be produced by the chemistry of life is found in the atmosphere of a planet orbiting another star in our galaxy. That's what people are using the James Webb Space Telescope to try and do. Try and find the fingerprints that those molecules leave behind on the light as it passes through a planet's atmosphere. I've made a whole video before on this channel on what molecules specifically we're looking for with JWST if you want to check that out. I'll link it in the video description down below. Now those biosignatures could be from any form of life, whether that's like single-celled organisms or plant life or an advanced, very intelligent civilization. But if we ever find one of these biomarkers in a planet's atmosphere, like fits this bill of could only be produced by life, then we won't necessarily know what kind of life we found and if it's advanced or intelligent in any way. But this research paper by Chosa and collaborators has been hunting for techno signatures. Signs of a technologically advanced civilization through the signals that they're giving off into outer space. Think about the Earth, for example, and all of those communication signals that come from the ground up to satellites in orbit or even space probes that are you know, are orbiting other planets. Those signals are being sent out in all directions. We are a communications beacon for anyone out there in the universe that might be listening and paying attention. So there are also projects here on Earth that make sure that we are also paying attention to the universe around us to also you know, see if there are other planets that are these beacons of communications giving out these techno signatures. Now, a lot of these projects fall under the banner of SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. And one of their biggest current projects is Breakthrough Listen, a 10-year project with a hundred million dollars of funding that was set up back in 2015 as part of the Breakthrough Foundation. Yep, the same one that funds like the breakthrough prizes in maths, physics, and life science. A lot of the research scientists on the project are based over in Berkeley and California in the US, but the international headquarters for the whole project have just moved to right here in Oxford. And as part of that Breakthrough Listen project, there have been numerous searches for techno signatures, specifically from stars and planets in our own Milky Way galaxy, but sadly to no avail. The problem that these searches have is that the Milky Way has almost a hundred billion stars. So monitoring all of them for techno signatures, even the ones that are just visible to us, is practically impossible. You know, the funding for this project pays for the time to use the Green Bank Telescope in West Virginia and the Parks Observatory in New South Wales in Australia. But even if you had funding for 200 telescopes, not just two telescopes, you still wouldn't be able to monitor all of the stars that are visible to us in the night sky in the Milky Way. So there could be some signals that we are missing. Now, Chosa and collaborators point out that by searching instead for extra galactic techno signatures, you can observe all of the billions of stars in one galaxy at a single time, meaning that you can cover a much larger area of the universe, billions of stars at once. 
Now, of course, if you're gonna detect any sort of techno signature at those incredible distances between us and even just nearby galaxies at millions to billions of light years away, the signal that you are going to detect has to be incredibly, incredibly energetic and bright, meaning that in these kind of extra galactic techno signature studies, you'll only be able to detect a techno signature from what's known as a type two Kardashev civilization. And the Kardashev scale is a hypothetical scale that we could use to measure the technological advancement of a civilization, you know, based on the amount of energy that they need to use to actually power their society. It was first proposed back in 1964 by Soviet astronomer Nikolai Kardashev, and they have three main classes of civilization. A type one Kardashev civilization would be able to use all the energy available to it on the home planet. Whereas a type two Kardashev civilization would be able to use all the energy output by a planet's star, presumably using something like a Dyson sphere, which again is something that's completely hypothetical. If you think about like, if you could put solar panels over the entirety of the Earth's surface to, you know, absorb the sun's light and turn it into energy, you'd still only be taking like a tiny little bit of the sunlight that's actually emitted by the sun that like the Earth's area intersects with. Instead, if you imagine building like this huge spherical construction around the entire sun and then putting like solar panels all on the inside to absorb its energy, then that's kind of how you can imagine a Dyson sphere. And then a type three Kardashev civilization is able to use all the energy available from every object in its galaxy. So all the stars, dust, gas, black holes that are glowing. Earth is not even a type one Kardashev civilization, right? We're too entrenched in using damaging fossil fuels to actually reach our full potential of using all the energy that's available to us on the planet. So when we're searching for techno signatures in other galaxies, we're searching for civilizations that are way, way, way more advanced than ours is. But what are we actually searching for? We use telescopes on the ground that detect long radio wavelengths of light, like the ones that we use to communicate with on Earth as well. And we're looking for signals that are emitted at very specific frequencies of light that look artificial. So astronomical objects like stars, for example, also give out radio wavelengths of light. But when they do, they give it off at a huge range of wavelengths or frequencies. But if we see a very bright signal that's being emitted only at a very specific frequency of light that we also know isn't a frequency that like, for example, hydrogen will emit at, then we can be pretty sure that what we're seeing is artificial. Plus, if you're gonna get a signal like that from a planet, then this signal will also undergo something known as Doppler drift. The frequency that we see will change with time as the planet orbits its star and moves towards us on its orbit, squishing the wavelength of light and increasing the frequency, and then moves away from us on its orbit around the star, stretching out the wavelength of light and making the frequency lower. It's the same thing that happens to sound waves from an ambulance siren as it races towards and away from you. We hear that squashing and stretching of the sound wave as a pitch change. Now, the problem is there's lots of sources of interference when you look for artificial signals because we also use radio waves here on Earth to communicate. And there's different frequencies that have been set aside for specific areas to use, like for example, GPS or air traffic control or communication satellites or even NASA's deep space network that communicates with space missions like the rovers on Mars, like Perseverance or the Voyager probes that are way past the edge of the solar system. So it means that you could detect this, you know, very bright signal that is all at one frequency, but it's actually coming from a satellite and not from an actual, you know, alien civilization out there in the universe. So what Chozer and collaborators did to actually double check that what they're seeing is real rather than interference is that they would point at the galaxy for five minutes and then look somewhere else for five minutes and then come back to the galaxy for five minutes and then look somewhere else for five minutes and then come back again for five minutes and then look somewhere else for five minutes. And if that signal is real, when you look away from the galaxy, the signal should disappear. And when you come back, it should reappear as opposed to interference, which should be there throughout the entire observation whether you're on or off source 
of the galaxy that you're looking at. So this is what Chaucer and collaborators did with observations of 97 galaxies over five years, giving a total 229 hours of observing time, which gave them 140 terabytes of data. That's like the equivalent in size to a five year long, like 1080p HD video. So it's a huge amount of data that they had to search through for these techno signatures. So they actually wrote a computer algorithm that would look through the data and pull out any signals that looked promising and had this Doppler drift behavior. The algorithm had over 6 million hits that looked like it had Doppler drift. But then they had another algorithm to search through those 6 million hits to check if the signal was actually real or not, looking to see if it disappeared when they moved away from the galaxy for those five minutes and if it came back again. That left them with just 1,519 possible real Doppler drift techno signatures across their 97 galaxies. Those 1,500 signals were then individually inspected by the members of the team to work out if they were actually real or not. And sadly, in the end, all of them were put down to radio frequency interference or RFI. So no evidence for any type two Kardashev civilizations, at least in the 97 galaxies that Chozer and collaborators looked at. However, there could be a possibility that some signals have been missed in that huge amount of data that they have because no computer algorithm is perfect because it's coded up by imperfect humans. And I'm sure there are many of you sat at home right now just screaming at the screen for them to use AI. And yeah, that is the next natural step here for that research. But it's worth pointing out that's a lot more difficult than you, you know, might expect given the ubiquity of AI tools sort of in modern life right now. Because if you were going to have an AI or ML algorithm that would do this, then you would need to actually train it on real data first so it would know what to look for in the huge data set that you gave it. And we don't have any of these real techno signatures with Doppler drifts to actually train a machine on. All we have are artificial signals that we can create with simulations. So it's, so it's going to take some time and some clever thinking to be able to do this. But what I really think that this research highlights so clearly is the impact of radio interference on ground-based radio observatories. Like, look at those numbers again. There was over 6 million hits in the data of artificial-looking radio signals, but every single one of them just turned out to be radio frequency interference. Like, that's a huge number to deal with. And if we think about these mega constellations of satellites that are going up now, the likes of Starlink, for example. Like we talk a lot in the astronomy community about the impact of Starlink on ground-based telescopes that use visible light to look at the universe. But we don't talk enough about that impact on radio telescopes. Because if these mega constellations are just gonna keep getting bigger, like Starlink now, for example, has 5,000 satellites in orbit, but the plan is for them to have 12,000 satellites in orbit eventually like this problem is only going to get worse. So our algorithms that search through this data are going to need to get better at removing all of this background noise and spotting it for what it is so that we don't miss the signals and the data that we're actually interested in, whether that is techno signatures from advanced civilizations or something more natural or something just like going bump in the night out there in the universe. So this research by Chozer and collaborators, although a negative result on techno signatures, you know, there's still no alien civilizations out there that we know of yet, it will help pave the way forward for the continued operation of ground-based radio telescopes and observatories in today's modern world. Before we get to the bloopers, would you like a fun, free, and easy way to learn more science? Those of you who've been watching my videos for a long time now will know that I absolutely love Brilliant, the sponsor of today's video, who provide a platform for you to learn new concepts in science, maths, and computer science 
interactively with thousands of lessons from basics to advanced topics and new lessons added every single month. As you'd expect, they've got a great astrophysics course, which I love, you know, if you want to learn more about how we find planets in orbit around other stars. But the key thing that underpins the research that we talked about in this video is data analysis. With so much data, you just have to get so good at the basics that it becomes just like breathing. And I love that Brilliant's Data Analysis Fundamentals course allows you to do just that in this interactive way that is just so effective. So to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days, head to brilliant.org forward slash Dr. Becky, or you can click on that link in the video description down below. And the first 200 of you that do are going to get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So thank you so much to Brilliant for their continued support of this channel. And now, roll those bloopers. Now these biosignatures could, oh, there's a hair somewhere in my mouth and it's bugging me. I'm sure you can't see it on camera, but I'm like, what if you can? <laughs> Signs of a technological, technical, technologically advanced. I think I wanted to put like an extra C in there then, like technologically. <laughs> So the Kardashev scale is a hypothetical scale that we use to measure the technological, I did it again, technological, <laughs> Nikolai Kardashev. And they have three main classes of civilization. So I just want to point out, right, I feel like the 60s was like prime time for just like, I'm just going to write down this random idea and everyone will name it after me and it'll be great. The funding that was set up in 2015 as part of the Breakthrough Foundation. That's enough to have foundations, but I can't 